right, ladies and gentlemen, my guest for today is an award-winning writer, actress, singer, and author. She is extremely passionate about writing stories that encourage readers to share their truth in hopes of receiving a release and a breakthrough. They never knew they needed, and that's something that we all need. And guess what? She's in our one-on-one right now. She's on the fence today. Hopefully, we're gonna yeah. get her off of it by the end of the show. Nikki, right? ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> what's up? How are you doing? I am great. I am great. Just happy to be on here. And yes, you said it. I am hoping to help people to release um, that hurt that they've been carrying around for years. Oh, that's an interesting topic matter um, when it comes to hurt. P people carry hurt like backpacks. Why do you think that is? <laughs> uh, well, hurt to me is a weight in itself. It's a stronghold. And to me, from where I'm addressing it as where a lot of times I believe the hurt starts as a child. Uh -huh. You encounter something as a childhood in your childhood and even maybe teenage lives. And I think that people carry that weight, like you said, it's a back, like a backpack. They carry that weight all into their um, adulthood. So, yeah. Yeah. So I just think that you know it's never addressed like it should be, or not um, not, not addressed at all. Okay. And so 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 let's talk about that hurt for a second, because I said backpack, but it's more like they carry they carry it around like it's uh, money in their wallet, you know. <laughs> They don't leave home without it as if it's a credit card of some sort. And they carry it from one scenario to the next, one relationship to the yeah. next. And it's an ongoing cycle. And it, it traces back to childhood. Um, yeah. I, I truly believe that uh, a, a great number of our issues as adults stem from traumas that we experienced as children that we never uh, dealt with. And then for the most part, I think most people tend to suppress those uh those traumas though that pain which is why they carried around like money yeah uh, or, or or a credit card so yeah. when it comes to people you know we talk about healing the heart right but where does that really start for people i think it starts where you really need to embrace um what has happened to you mm -hmm. um kind of like for me my personal experience is that i was molested as a little girl which is this just this is what it stems from. Okay. And during that time, um, you know, it, I, I was young, maybe around six, six or seven years old, mm -hmm. um, when it when it when it happened to me. But I believe I suppressed that um, because I actually have forgotten about it, to be honest. Okay. So I still I didn't start having visions about it until about late my late thirties, maybe. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize until then that my mind was really suppressing it. I had not really embraced what happened. I thought I had forgotten about it, but it wasn't until 2017 where I attended a retreat and I um, just broke out crying at that retreat. Mm. Broke out crying like I've never cried before. And that's when it hit me where I released actually the family members that that um, sexually abused me. So. So, yeah, I just think that, you know, a lot of people does. It depends on how, how great the hurt is, first of mm. all. It depends on that. Um, and then I just think that some people just suppress it. But some people try to take it as, you know, by, um, how should I say, try to get rid of it by drugs, alcohol, um, by using those means. But those mm. things just, they just numb it. They just numb it. So for tree fruit freedom and, and peace of mind, in my opinion, is to release the person that hurt you or the people that hurt you. Because hurting people hurt people. I don't know if you mm. realize that hurting people hurt people. And right. that's what I believe. Now, now we talked about numbing. Can you actually numb pain with substances that actually add to the hurt in, in your life? Because I think masking the pain that you suffered as a child, in your case, molestation, not saying this is what you did, but right. uh, in some cases you, you probably did it just not with drugs and alcohols. And some people use sex and a host of other right. things to mask the pain that they're Absolutely. feeling. 
Is it because they can't readily identify what that pain is, where that pain actually stemmed from, or is it one of those situations, as in a case, did you blame yourself for your your molestation? I didn't blame myself. Um, when 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 the visions would come, I would just cry, um, and kind of more so. Uh, I didn't understand, you know, why, but. I got to the point where, when, like I said, when I got released and my freedom, it was like, you know, how how can I help others um, see how to release how to release that? Because you're right. I don't think it they think it's numbing their pain. Right. You know, but like you're saying, it's really masking it. Um, just like a lot of people would wear uh, a facade. You know, uh-huh. really, you, you, you're, you want people to see you smiling, but really and truly you're hurting on the inside. So I believe, like you said, I think like the drugs, the alcohol, some of the things they get into are just masking it. They're just masking it. So it's going to take embracing what happened to you and then addressing what happened to you. It may take some therapy, but for me, I saw God. I saw the Bible because tremendous hurt. You can't do it alone. You can't release in, in that hurt alone. It's just not going to happen. So That's true. I, yeah, I just believe that um, it comes with prayer and it comes with asking God for help to, you know, you know, to get rid of that hurt. Again, the forgiveness, forgiving is not for the person that offended you, abused you. It's not for them. So it's for the individual to have that freedom and sanity and sanity. So I just think the person have to realize, you know, what it's going to take for that. True, true. Yeah. Hey, guys, if you're just joining us, we're talking to Nikki Miller and we're talking about how to heal your heart. Today's show, we're about we're talking about how to heal your heart, plus how to transform your mind and body. And we have another guest that's coming on later on in the show to talk about that. But you, you're talking we're talking about changing of the heart. Now, at what point in your life did you realize your heart needed a heart transplant, per se? Whew. Well, I would say, now I, I encountered God a long time ago. I've been in church all my life, mm-hmm. um, which is which is what the book shows. The book shows that, you know, um, it's what I grew up around seeing, what I grew up around hearing. And then, of course, being the, um, a victim, because it's going to show uh, awareness of sexual abuse. Uh-huh. But I just feel that my heart did really did not trans, uh, transform until my relationship with God um, I got closer to him. And that is the truth. <laughs> I wasn't bad. I don't think I was bad. Hey, I don't think I was bad. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't think that that transform did not transformation did not come to me until uh, probably in my 20s. And that was when I got closer to God. But a true fixing of my heart where things kind of like kicked off into gear with what God had purpose for me to do mm-hmm. was was after that retreat. It was after that retreat. Okay, so let's talk about that for a second, because yeah. I, I want to make sure, you know, I'm always uh, clear on, on on the lines when it comes to certain things, because I, I am um, aware that everybody don't believe the same thing. Right. And so 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 when you talk about your heart being transformed and changed when it came to you building or establishing a relationship with God, yeah. can you give me specific as to how that took place? Because for the listening audience who mm-hmm. may not believe in the God that you serve, but Absolutely. still may need a heart transplant, how does that process take shape? To, that process um, takes shape actually through the Bible, of course, through reading the Bible, but it also takes shape when you put the Bible into action. So what I would do for me, and I can only say for myself, Mm -hmm. Um, I take certain verses that I may be dealing with, whatever situation I'm dealing with, whether it's finance, um, whether I'm, you know, depressed at some point, I take uh, uh, verses in the Bible, look it up. Um, People may even Google it because I've Googled before, too, and say, (laughs) say, you know, hey, find me a Bible verse on, you know, finances. Uh, And it pulls up, you know, Google pull up everything these days. Mm -hmm. But I did that and I put that to work. I may profess and, you know, speak the word, hang verses up um, around the house to remind me of what it says. Um, Also, it comes with, you know, just being in the presence. And when I say the presence, you know, listen to um, uh, worship music, positive music, you know, instead of taking in all the negative things. So it depends on what you surround yourself with as well. So, yes, God has a big part of it, but it also depends on 
what you're involved in and what you surround yourself with. You surround yourself with negative people or negative things, then negative t- negativity is going to continue to pour into you. So, mm-hmm. so it's not like it's not with, with just um, just saying God, you know. But yes, it was the, the the Bible, reading that and prayer, prayer. You know, I can't even get by the day without without prayer. And that's what I mean, relationship, because relationship is really it's not just our Father who art in heaven. You know, just that mm-hmm. type of praying. It's just communication. And some people think it's just this grand old thing when it's just simple talking, simple talking to God. So it's just relationship. So now I'm going to ask you this question. Now, I hope okay. they I, I hope they prepped you for me before you Come came on, on here. here. Come on here. Come OK, on. so so because I want I want to make sure people understand you're not saying if you don't believe in the God I serve, and you don't read scriptures and you don't pray that your heart can't be healed. Correct. You're not saying that. Or are you saying that? No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is. He plays a big part in it. And if you want that release, like the final complete release, uh, for me, again, it works on testimony now. Okay. My testimony. So I can only tell you what it, what God has done for me. So for testimony wise, you know, no, I'm not saying, <laughs> I'm not saying that, no, that's the only way your heart is going to change, but it sure plays a huge part. It plays okay. a huge part in it. Is that now, fair? Does- is that fair? I don't know if fair is what I use, the term I would use, but okay, I, okay. now I, because I completely understand, I, but I do know in this world we live in, people don't believe the same things. You're and right. oftentimes in the community that's known as the Christian community, right. that's been preached a lot of, if you don't serve my God, if you don't do what my God says, then then you're damned and nothing's going to happen. And I don't believe that because I believe that the God of the universe loves everybody equally and and the same. However, getting people to that point where they actually need the things that let's say healing, let's say forgiveness, you know, it's like, how do you get them there? Cause they're not going to understand the lingo when it comes to certain things that people, um, that believe in the God of the universe talk about that right. comes from the realm of church. Cause we all know that the church has, has got the bad rap over the time Absolutely. period because of man yes. and the things that man do um, <laughs> that has nothing to do with God, but everything yes. to do with man. So yes. I want to be clear with people because they'll be like, well, I can't get healed. Cause well, what about my heart? It's hurting right now. So <laughs> I want to see if your book delves into helping people through those realms, even if they don't believe in the same God that you believe in. Okay. That's, that's what I was going to actually say. So for me, I want to reach those. That's why I believe God gave me the story that I have to not only reach the people inside the church, mm-hmm. but outside of the church. So he give me, uh, he has given me, cause this is my debut book. This is my debut movie. Um, okay. So actually the, the, the movie came first and I turned it into a novel. So I believe this is my uh, way of showing people that, hey, this is for those not only in the church, but also outside of the church. Mm-hmm. So I didn't write it. My, my stories will be ones to where you're not going to be hit on upside the head with the Bible. OK. You know, I think that's important. Like what right. you're saying. Mm-hmm. So I'm making it to where, you know, it would be understood in a way to mm-hmm. where, you know, yes, we're telling you, I may tell you, you know, how my character came to get his, his release, but also show you like the process and how he did it. It's not going to be the same for everybody. Right. But I want my stories to be for everybody, for everybody. So it's just the way that I've that I've um, that I've written. So it got a little drama. That's why I didn't want it too chur- too churchy. If that right. makes sense. Absolutely wanted, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to reach um, those on the outside. Um, I may show a Bible in there sometimes, you know. And I'm not not knocking, you know, any faith based uh, movies. There've been a lot of faith based movies that that does. Um, hit hard on the Bible, but mine is b- based on like faith, just okay. grounded in faith. Believe and I think, I think, right. And that's just, that's the main thing for me. That's the focus. Okay. Yeah. And, and I'll say this to everybody because there's a number of you that's hearing my voice, hearing Nikki's voice. You, you're, you may be watching this at a later time or listening to it on one of the uh, podcast streaming platforms. And you're dealing with a number of heartaches and pains, 
uh, a lot of those things uh, came from, as we said earlier, your childhood. And you just probably hadn't identified that that's that's where it stemmed from. But I want you to know there is a process for you to be healed and for you to be made whole. Um, I believe it starts with you being honest. You got to be honest yeah. with yourself about where your, your where your pain actually stems from yeah. and then look at the proper steps that that's necessary to get you to that place of healing. That may require you seeing some uh, a professional that may require you seeing a counselor, a therapist, um, whatever you need to do, a, a, a coach of some sort. That's what you need to do to do it, because right. at the end of the day, we want you to win. We want you whole and we want you healthy. But more importantly, we want you to be the best version of yourself. That's it. You know? That's yeah. it. Right? That is that is it. That is it. That's why I want to reach my story, the movie. I wanted to reach people outside of the church just as much because mm -hmm. um, even with, with with mentioning about, you know, child sexual abuse. Um, that's one thing that I'm making known in here, but I'm also addressing that you can be healed from past hurt of mm. any kind. So it's to help others heal from any hurt of any kind and just let them know, you know, these are things that's not just, just, uh, happens, you know, inside the church, but it's a global right. Child sexual abuse is global. It doesn't discriminate. So that's my main focus. That's where my heart is. Mm -hmm. is, to, is to help those you know everywhere everywhere not just the church and so, and so you have a uh, foundation called the healing hearts foundation tell us a little bit about that yeah i'm actually it's um in the midst in the midst of being organized okay so i told you like in 2017 i went to a retreat that my church did and that's where i released um the people well at that time again talking about just relationship you know god had me and i quieted myself got quiet where god to to speak to me and, mm. and during that time he said that first of all i didn't understand i didn't understand why he gave me the story in the first place because i'm like how is this going to help others <laughs> you know what was how it's going to help others so <laughs> so i heard crickets crickets number crickets so, <laughs> so but when when he um when i got my release he said now you're able to help others and that was because i had for, for, forgiven so during that time also he said, I want you to tell your parents, I'm 48 years old. That was in 2017. So yeah. that was huge for me. That was very huge for me. Um, and then that was uh, uh, building on that level. He said, you're not done. Now to help others again is I want you to establish a 501c3 that will mentor girls 12 to 13 years of age that has been sexually abused as well. So it's to teach them that they not victims, they're victorious. Uh -huh. And that um, that they can they can get through this, they can get through it. So and just educate them on, you know, speaking up, even with the movie in the book, speak up when it first happens, because mm -hmm. I believe that, you know, being silent is more damaging, much more damaging than uh, speaking up. OK, so, so um, before we get out of here today, so so in your quest to changing hearts, and doing the things that you aspire to do in your life. Um, there's some things you're on the fence about, right? <laughs> like what? Oh, we know. Like what? <laughs> so, so so when you when you think about this journey, why why are you laughing? You know it. <laughs> I'm trying to see what you're gonna say. Have you seen have you seen this show before? I just started watching watch it when <laughs> when met last week. So, so you don't see what comment. I do here, right? And then I saw your comment like about the kidney insurance. So, I'm like, uh-oh, uh-oh. So okay. let me tell you what I see for you. Okay. You, you have you have big a big vision. You got uh -huh. big dreams. Uh -huh. There's a lot of things that you've experienced in life that's in and out of the church sector, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And even at times now where you are, you don't feel appreciated. Um, sometimes I, you're right. I know I'm right now. Yeah. So what is, <laughs> are you definitely prophet? know I'm right. You're a prophet. So 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 there are some areas that you have to achieve in life, but you don't necessarily have the confidence to do so. You have the ability, but you're not as confident in these areas where you feel like you don't have enough knowledge, you don't have enough experience, 
But the truth of the matter is you're very well equipped. Mm -hmm. You just lack the confidence to go forth and do it. So you kind of make excuses. You kind of uh, belabor in a sense for on things that you need to do mm -hmm. to get you where you want to go. And I'm just here to let you know, you got to get your ass off the fence. <laughs> you know what you're saying, what you're saying, a lot of it is true. Um, in the past, I've had like more confidence. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times my prayer, my prayer is to go back to that confidence that I had growing up where I was on stage. I did some of everything um, as far as, you know, um, singing, dancing, and it kind of like faded away, kind of mm. faded away as I got older. And I don't know if it was because I got out of it too long and now, but I'm stepping back into it. I'm stepping back into it. And my, my confidence, um, even doing this, because normally I would be nervous. I'm going to tell you. Um, oh, you nervous. I was nervous. No, I'm getting ready to say I'm, I'm nervous. No, I was nervous when I came on, before I mm -hmm. came on, because I don't, you know, getting to know you, but um, I was nervous, but I'm not nervous anymore. I wasn't nervous um, mm -hmm. as it got older. So, I mean, as we um, went along. So I just feel that now the confidence is starting to build and it's building now as I embrace mm -hmm. what everything that, you know, God has given me for this vision, because it's bigger than me. This is my, way, way bigger than me, way bigger than me. But I believe, you know, doing things like this, um, telling my story more often is um, getting me more used to this. So and, and my confidence is starting to come back. Your confidence so, never left. It hasn't well, gone anywhere. It hasn't gone. But was it suppressed? Mm -hmm. Suppressed? Well, well, you, you, a, a number of things affect our confidence, but it's more important what we believe that the devil has telling us about ourselves. Oh, that's, that's good. That's normally what happens. See, there's yeah. a, there's a there's a a, a comparing contrast. If you believe what God tells you about you, you you're operating one realm, yes. full of confidence. But if yes. you start believing what Satan tells you, they both work the same you're right. way. You're right. You know, so you got to stop listening to what the devil is telling you, and you got to actually do what you have taught so many other people to do in your profession right. and what you do, you got to start believing that and consistently believe that. And you got to speak that every day because see, faith comes by hearing, not just hearing exactly. other people say God's word, but hearing yourself say God's right. word as well. Right. So right. that's what you got to do. And that's what's going to get you off the fence. Yes. That's what's going to get me off. The, that's what's going to get me off the fence. And that's why I said about the um, when, when something happens to me or I'm feeling a down day because I'm human, I get the Bible and I start get uh, verses, Bible verses, and that's what speaks to me. So I will start confessing, professing that word and speaking that word so that Satan can flee um, um, from me. Because, yes, he does attack, um, try, try to attack my mind. But I've yeah. come to the place where um, I believe that, you know, God is teaching me how to fight back. So, yeah. He's already taught you. He ain't yeah, teaching you saying. nothing new. Yeah, he already taught you. That's He's taught me how to fight. Yeah. He's taught me how to fight back. He's taught me how to fight back. So final thing I'll say to you, watch the words you use. Watch yes. what comes out of your mouth. What comes out of your mouth, Nikki, right. is what's in your heart. So you got to right. watch what comes out of your mouth. But more important, you got to watch what goes in your mind, because what goes in your that's mind true. is what travels down to your heart. That's and right. that's what comes out of your mouth. I agree. I agree. Look at us helping Nikki get her ass off the fence today. I love it. All right, nigga, if people want to get at you, how can they uh, connect with you on social media? Yes, my um, social media uh, social media handler, handles are, so I am Nikki, it's N-I-K-K-I-R, Miller, M-I-L-L-E-R, and that is on Facebook and IG. And then the Change of Heart Project is under Change of Heart Movie. It's at Change of Heart Movie. That's on Facebook and on IG. There's a website. For the uh, project is www.cohmovie.com and then also i have a youtube channel is a change of heart movie channel just as simple as that all right all right nigga thank you for hanging out with us today we enjoyed uh having this conversation with you and we hope to see you around again okay all right all right thank you mr hill Yo, 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 yo. You're in the mix. The world's finest, man. DJ. Down. I have the radio on the telly. You're in the mix, Lord.
Oh, 